Santa Cruz predominantly, and I have developed a protocol called sports power therapy that focuses more on muscle function and muscle efficiency. So we've incorporated that in with some core exercises uh, on top of the chiropractic, and that's why we call it sports chiropractic. That's awesome. I know that, God, today I woke up and I was like, oh, I really need a chiropractic adjustment. My, like, it's, hard, it's hard to breathe. I, I mean, I don't know what a rib out is, but I feel like if, if I had that, this is what it would be like. Um, but oftentimes, like if I get an adjustment, it doesn't really like help all the way. So tell me, why is um, sports chirotherapy so unique and uh, better than a traditional adjustment? Yeah, so the traditional adjustment goes in and it's looking more at sym symmetry of the spine, and it can help with the muscles relax around that. And that's also, it's kind of a double uh, contribution to that. But what's missing is a more dynamic approach to specific areas of the body, including chronic issues and breakdowns with uh, associated muscle tissue involvement. And so that can lead to all kinds of syndromes that people get confused with. And the, the adjustment is a great component, but it doesn't uh, accomplish what needs to be done uh, on a bigger scope. So I went out looking for a more dy dynamic approach to those issues. And a lot of it comes from soft tissue breakdowns, soft tissue dysfunction, uh, soft tissue imbalance, muscle loading imbalance, that leads to loading of the joints improperly, leads to breakdowns of biomechanical function, and around and around you go in these compensation syndromes. And so the whole goal of the sports car therapy is getting after breaking those compensation patterns down. And then the core exercises go in because we can overlook our core function, and it's real subtle how that's get lost. And I've had it happen to me multiple times, and it's really confusing. So we try and incorporate all three into the component, into the <clears throat> protocol to allow for a three-pronged approach uh, to return to, to function. So the three-pronged approach is the range of motion muscling testing, the trigger point therapy, well, I guess it may be four, the adjustment as necessary, and then the corrective exercise? Yeah, so the three, the three components, that if you just look at it from a basic function, is soft tissue therapy. So what I, how I describe it is you go in with the soft tissue work, to reboot the software, you go in with the chiropractic adjustment to restructure the alignment, which can be considered the hardware, and then the core function bring those two together. So it's communication between the software and the hardware. And so that's the three-pronged approach. So it's soft tissue work, chiropractic adjustment, and then core exercises for core function. Awesome. And so by working with the movement pattern as well as you know, doing the adjustment and the soft tissue work, you're creating a more holistic approach, it sounds like, and also the ability for the individual to not have to come and see you three times for the rest of their life. Yeah, exactly. The, you know, as a patient myself and a chiropractor, um, you know, I, redundancy of performance uh, and breakdown can be really frustrating for both the practitioner and the patient. And so this model is, is developed in self-reliability and so it involves education of the body from what I can perform with the soft tissue and the chiropractic and the core, uh, and then I edu edu educating the patient uh, with self-held tools and or self-ability at home and, you know, whenever they're doing their daily activities to help maintain that function. So the whole goal is self-reliability and not to have you come in all, all the time. I tell people all the time, I don't want you to be reliant on me. I want you to be self-reliable. And so as you go through the protocol, that's what it's about. It's reestablishing that consistency of function and then allowing that consistency of function to be put out farther and farther between treatments and then further and further out as you go through and you advance yourself through your daily activities and performances. So 
how is that a good business model for you? I mean, you're <laughs> job, so I mean, why why would a chiropractor want to adopt your your way of treating? I think the bottom line is about uh, again. I always joke that yeah, it's not the it's not the best business model, but it works the best for the client, and that's the bottom line. So you know, it's about me feeling good about helping and solving situations that allow that person to feel good and solve their own situations, and that's a good that's a better performance model for me for that client to go out and tell other clients if you look at it from a business model perspective. But uh, yeah, jokingly, it's not the best business model, but that's what you don't want, honestly. And so I. I'm completely fine with that. <laughs> so people, you know, have their daily lives and inevitably you put them back together, but they're not in a bubble. They're not isolated. So they're going to be continuing to, heaven forbid, injure themselves and they're going to continue to live their life. So they're going to always need somebody like you to put them back together. No, it's true. Like we promote and I fall into this category as well. I'm like any other patient. I, uh, you know, I get la lazy with my exercises and, and I get overzealous with my performances and all of a sudden I'm broken again and I got to call people and they have to come try and fix me or I try and go help them fix me. Uh, but from a patient perspective, we promote the, the maintenance wellness model and that's about once a month because yeah, when I tell my clients that are well into that model and they're feeling great and they're training great, uh, it's like, you know, if you're a runner, swimmer, triathlete, biker, person, human, whatever you do, there's going to be some lifestyle breakdowns that go into that. And so you want to come in, get rebooted and off you go. And so I tell my clients that think of me as a catcher's permit, you know, so no matter how you're feeling at the end of that month, you're coming in and we're going to fix you up and then off you go again. So it's a great model to live by. And I try and do it myself more and more. And it's helped me with my chronic breakdowns that I've had for years. So let's talk about that for a minute. So you are a chiropractor, you help others heal. So what's your uh, athletic background? I've I heard a rumor that you've, you've won some championships. <laughs> athletic ability. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I was a runner wrestler in high school, then I was a full-time runner in college. I was All-American at UC San Diego in the, in the 1500 meters my last year. And then after that, post-college, uh, continuing to want to be a runner, I moved up to run with other clubs and end up moving up here to train with the Nike Olympic development team out of Stanford while I was going to grad school in Davis. And then from there, kept going uh, along the lines of just club running. And then luckily as a master's runner now, I joined an incredible team called West Valley Track Club. And it is an extremely competitive world out there in the master's running world. Little did I know that. And uh, we've gone on to win, you know, national championships. And I've been a part of these teams and it's been incredible and now i'm uh coming off injuries and trying to crawl my way back up to a competitive state it's going to take a couple of years but hopefully i'll get there what kind of injuries have you sustained as a result of your training oh just multiple i'm not just training just having three kids and driving everywhere and picking this up i'm still a surfer i'm still a biker i'm still a skier so things have happened to me over the years this past year i had hip bursitis i had a, a acl surgery so that really was a rock bottom low for me. So I've been rebuilding myself now uh, since last November. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and so you said that you get um, treatment and adjustments and you do a specific uh, soft tissue work that I know some other people at Santa Cruz Corps do. And can you tell us about that and how that's been helpful in your um, rehab? Yeah, so when I uh, branched out to look at soft tissue therapies that would be applicable in the clinic, um, I have a couple colleagues that we're involved with what's called Hansen Manual Therapy. So we call it, you know, it's HMT for short. And it's a very specific model that goes after tr deep trigger point release that allows functionality to come back into the muscle. So it takes a hyper-stressed muscle, relaxes it, and lets that muscle fire, relax, fire, relax, in a nutshell. And so that type of deep trigger point release is not the most comfortable, but it's the most effective. So if you look at different types of muscle release, whether it be Graston or ART, this type of approach is much more specified to, towards the source of the problem and not just site specific. So by getting that with the chiropractic and the exercises and my colleagues at core that helped me with that, <laughs> they're able to piece me back together. But uh, I'm a three for I'm, I'm a three for one deal. Uh, when I'm being treated, I have to go see three different people. <laughs> wow, that's so efficient to do sports chirotherapy at Santa Cruz Core because they come in, they get treated, and then do you recommend the? I know that Santa Cruz Core. Uh, having worked there myself, um, they they do multiple things, not just chiropractic. So do you recommend the other services or how does it work? Oh, absolutely. We, we have a team here that works together and we all collaborate with certain clients and it's really just depending on where the client is. So what I tell my clients that come to see me is I'm like the nuts and bolts guy. 
And so I'm a very fundamental person getting them back to functional shape, a, a, a strong platform to go do more dynamic activity with. And so from there, we, you know, again, there's different types of the physical trainers and physical therapists that work with us that we go after and we're looking towards, you know, them handling the more dynamic functions of exercise progressions more than what I do. My exercises are very fundamental to the core function itself, allowing my clients to do much more dynamic activity. And then you throw a massage therapy on top of that with acupuncture as well. And you've got a very nice network of uh, collaborators and, and practitioners that can help on all different levels. That's awesome. And with that hands and muscle therapy, is that like ART? I know um, some people really like active release technique. And um, why, why did you choose the hands and manual therapy or hands and muscle therapy uh, versus like an ART approach? Yeah, so over the years, I mean, ART was the main kind of muscle therapy that was being taught at the different colleges. And uh, hands and manual therapy, we've been trying to get it out there. And so uh, we've, uh, it was just kind of an unknown uh, at the time. It, it's, it's getting more traction, I would say, because you know, seminars are out there where they were. Um, but in relation to the specificity of it, ART to me is a little less uh, of a deep release that can be needed. The active release model is very effective and I use it on lots of muscles. Again, these all go in, there's a different pool of muscle therapy that can be used. Um, I go for the HMT because it is the most effective way to get that muscle to, to return to optimal function. And also the way we use it is it's not just one muscle release. There's a lot of other dysfunction around the areas of injury and or sites of injury. And so that allows for that type of analysis and uh, functional release at that point. So in a nutshell, active release technique is just not as good as it is. Not as good. <laughs> Uh, in my opinion, no. But again, each each injury is uh, specific. I've had ART save some of my injuries, and so I, I can use it as a tool um, in a way that's effective for certain uh, situations. So it has its own place for sure. Uh, but I, I believe that HMT is a, is a more functional, deeper release that lasts longer. That sounds like you're getting really to the root of the problem. You know, I really appreciate the idea of uh, softening and releasing the muscles so that the bones can kind of naturally go back into alignment do you find that you have to adjust everyone and do you just so a couple questions do you, do you find that you have to adjust everyone or or do you think that sometimes just the soft tissue work is enough because people are like some people are like oh i don't want i don't want to hear the cracking sound what, what are all the alternatives for that yeah i mean every every client has their own interpretation that they've had chiropractic before and they liked it or didn't like it and what type of practitioner they were dealing with as a chiropractor there's a lot of different protocols um uh, and uh, techniques, but uh, with my personal situation, you know, I, I'm very aware that some people do not appreciate the adjustment as much, so we have a very open dialogue about when and where it's necessary, and it's applied as such, and I use different approaches if I can, or not at all, if it's not needed, and I have found that, again, the, the soft tissue work is a big component of that functionality returning. And so you can almost accomplish both. I do like the adjustment for when it's needed and it's very, very appropriate a lot of the time. But if someone is not into that, that's okay. We can work around that as best we can. Now they might not come back to you as an effective return without the adjustment. And so we have to dialogue that very openly from the beginning. Uh -huh. you, you guys have access or use an activator, right? Yeah, we use an activator and we can, you know, do soft, you know, soft tissue work around that. And the activator comes in very handy for certain clients that have approved it. Awesome. I know that um, I had a friend who's pregnant. She had sciatica. Have you been able to effectively treat um, like prenatal patients? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, as a father of three, I've been, <laughs> been very hands on with pregnancies. As a practitioner, I've had multiple pregnancies come through at different varying states of the term. So it really depends on how the person is handling it, how it's affecting the body, their body personally. Uh, but yes, very much so. And it's amazing because it's, it's a, a major event on the body. And so the muscle work and the chiropractic go very well along the way to help with that person's function, just as a human and also going into the birth and coming out of birth and returning to form. So they, we can handle it from the beginning to the end and then post. <laughs> and so do you see a lot of individuals who have had injuries or car accidents or like what's your what's your ideal client oh i mean every client's ideal in the sense that we're helping them but um you know we take all cases it depends on where they're coming in from what they have i've had some very very complicated multiple sclerosis 
patients and other, you know, types of more, uh, def, you know, neurodefective uh, situations that we try and go in and just handle one step at a time and see if we can help them in any way we can. So ranging from no injury all the way up to, you know, post-surgery or pre-surgery, any with different neuromuscular function or all, all the above, really. I think that there's a misconception with chiropractic where that, you know, you adjust the neck, lower back, middle back, but not the rest of the joints. You treat the whole body, right? You don't just treat the spine. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I got into this in a way that I was unable to before with just the adjustment. We learned to adjust certain, you know, appendages all the way through. So, yeah, we can look at shoulders, elbows, wrists. But from a more muscular dysfunction, we're, we are very limited in scope. So I, that's why I took it upon myself to go out and take these seminars and learn these different uh, modalities because uh, chiropractic alone it doesn't cover it as efficiently, in my opinion. So, you know, it was wild. I mean, when I was out there, we were, I was dealing with, you know, physical therapists, doctors, uh, physical trainers, all of the above. And it was really cool. That's so awesome. still am, you know. <laughs> so where do you see, so how has um, COVID affected your practice and your ability to perform? I mean, you are hands-on with people and you can't really limit your, like you can't remotely treat somebody necessarily. So uh, are people coming in? Has it been slow? Um, how's your PPE looking? What, tell me about all that. Yeah, you know, we, we kept the doors open here the whole time. I mean, we, we knew that we were uh, very much necessary for people's lifestyles. And uh, if you had COVID or no COVID, we were still open to the doors. But, you know, obviously no COVID locked in the doors. But during the, during the real lockdown, we had the learning curve like everyone else. We had to learn what to wear, how to wear, how to be safe, where to be safe. Um, so we were very proactive along those lines. And Ford did an incredible job uh, getting that message out and keeping us safe. I mean, at one point, it was just me and one front office lady here. <laughs> it was really lonely. And, you know, clients had to be re-educated, and those that understood were able to come in and feel confident about their ability to be safe, and we felt the same way. So it was a very much a communal effort. And as time went by, you know, more and more comfort was felt and expressed and communicated, so more and more started coming back. Um, as for my personal care uh, home business, uh, over the hill, it was the same idea. I finally had a couple of clients call me up and I said, hey, I'm wearing a face mask, I've got gloves on, I've bleached on the table, we'll do it in an open area, plenty of room, you know, I'm ready if you are, and they are, uh, and have been. So it's been coming back a little bit. Um, I've lost a little bit of contact with Santa Fe University because they basically went on lockdown. So I have not been able to get on campus and work with their athletes since the lockdown. And I'm still kind of waiting for them to open up. I assume they will soon, and then uh, I'll be in communication with the coaches and see where we can go. Yeah, so you're not just uh, a doctor and an athlete, but you're a sports sports doctor. I mean, you you train like amazing athletes. You you work with them as a chiropractor. Sure, as an, with an athletic background and uh, lots of injury experience <laughs> on my own body, I've been uh, been able to and lucky enough to work with a lot of athletes at a very one-on-one -on -one level and also understanding their situations quite clearly because I've been there and I've trained with some of the best and I've seen some of the best. And so uh, I've been lucky enough to be attached with Santa Clara University with their runners and uh, we're trying to branch out to other, uh, you know, athletic teams. And then the local area is working with, the, you know, the triathlon clubs and the running clubs and being a runner on clubs myself, uh, getting access to those athletes as well. So it's it's been a really fun run, literally for me. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, they've they've benefited from it as well. So I've I've helped athletes, you know, get to get to higher levels of performance that are really noticeable, and that's they've been really appreciative of that, and that's been very nice over the years. That's awesome. I do also know. Little Birdie told me that you also had a big hand in um, donating your time. I know you've donated your time when we had events and races. You were at the at the <laughs> line helping, and then also recently. Um, giving your time to the Bonnie Dune and fire victims and giving them adjustments to help relieve some of their stress. Is that, how has that been for you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this was a very tumultuous time uh, for everybody. COVID on top of fires, on fires on top of COVID. And uh, imagine the distress and physical stress and mental stress coming out of those areas that really were devastated. So we were able to open up our services to those that were able to come in. And that is always a benefit as a, a practitioner is to help people in need. As for the events around Santa Cruz, that's always one of my fun things to do because it gets me involved with the community and meeting people from all over the place. Uh, so can't wait for those events to open up again. We, <laughs> we do enjoy those times.
Yeah, definitely. So where is, um, how can people find you if they want to get treated, they want to learn more, where would they go? Yeah, so SantaCruzCorps.com gets you started. That's got all the information there, phone numbers, access to getting online and getting um, appointments going. And, uh, you know, the front desk and back desk op office here is incredible. And they are very proactive in helping. You know, they offer deals that are great, very affordable. And uh, and we're open-ended on a to what we can offer for you. So we've got all kinds of access points to physical training, acupuncture, massage, and of course me. <laughs> and the other practitioner, Dr. Ryan. So he's here as well. That's awesome. And do you guys, you take insurance, right? We do. And so that type of information varies per client, I would assume. I hear them talking about it all the time. So I'm not the, the pro as <laughs> for insurance information. I just hope it does for the person calling in. And if not, we find ways that can help them out as best we can. Awesome. That's so great. And I also know being the founder of Santa Cruz Corps myself that we do offer uh, complimentary uh, initial assessments where you can meet and greet the chiropractor and he'll do some range of motion and tell you how he can help you, which is super beneficial when you're just not sure or want to, you know, see if the personalities and the practice uh, matches the need of the individual. Sure. Yeah. People come in and I spend, you know, uh, 10, 15 minutes with them talking about their issues and then showing them what I do and explaining in as much detail about what I can do to help them and how I can help them. And so that's the real goal is getting that initial intro dialogue going so people can get an idea of why it's different and why we do it. That can help them in a different way. A lot of times people come in and they've already been through all the practitioners and they, they're getting no results. And so for some, we are a very different angle, which is good. And so I always tell people after the dialogue, like, you know, your best bet is to come in one time so you can really feel the difference. And once you feel the difference, it gives you a much better understanding physically and mentally about where we're trying to go. So it's a hands-on event um, both times. Yeah, I find people say, like, I've always gone to the chiropractor to help, but it, was, it didn't help me permanently. It only helped me for a few days. And what I often will say to that is, well, we got to reassign and re reorient your whole movement pattern. And that's why I think sports chirotherapy sounds so awesome because – Maybe in the beginning, it's twice a week for the first three weeks, but then you tailor it because, you know, taper it down because they're, you're helping them to re-educate their body with their movement pattern. Yeah, and also what I tell people about that is that's a very common occurrence, and I'm in that same boat. I've had chronic issues forever that have been broken by this type of therapy. Uh, it's, it's always fascinating to me how that happened and why it happened, and I practice that every day, and I try to educate about that every day. I can't guarantee it, but that's where we're tending to go. And the way I explain it to people is that, the way the reason we use the three-pronged approach is because if you have one or the other you're missing the other two and so if you just get pt but your system and muscles are dysfunctional you're reinforcing that dysfunction you are getting the exercises in but you're missing a component of proper functionality and the same thing if you're just getting chiropractic you're missing the soft tissue component and or the pt component that goes into it and so when you look at all three at once that's a much more efficient and effective model to get all three of those systems activating at once together uh, versus one or the other. And so that's another dialogue I have with clients about that. Well, you sound very knowledgeable, Dr. Rhodes, and I so appreciate working with you. <laughs> and well, thank you. Getting you on my uh, podcast. I so appreciate you joining Zoom Around Town. Yeah, my pleasure. It's been fun. One of the things that I will say is that um, we do have a special video that we're going to be promoting with this uh, particular Zoom Around Town because it is specific to October and Halloween, and you are one of the stars in the show. So we will be posting that along with this video. I can't fun. wait. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Rhodes, for joining me, Jamie Jansen at Zoom Around Town. And if you want to see Dr. Rhodes, the way to get a hold of him is you can call 831-425-9500 and you can also check him out online at santacruzcore.com thanks so much